Go ahead, Arlen. Hi. Uh, welcome to our September broadcast of the Scout Circle from uh, scoutcircle.org. I'm here with Clark Green. Hey. Um, behind the here I am. Scout Circle graphic. There he is. <laughs> Hi, Clark. How was your summer? Uh, it was great. We had a great time. We got our week at summer camp, and uh, we went um, to uh, mm. Canada again, did some canoeing this summer, and uh, basically busy, but fun. All right, yeah, yeah, same here. It was, you know, running all over the place with scouts, and so we kind of uh, put the scout circle stuff on hold for a few months. Uh, the last one was in was in June, right? That was the OA one that you did all by yourself because I was off camping or something. I think, I think yes, yes. I think I did that all by myself. <laughs> and you survived and came back for more. So I did, yes. So, so this month we are talking to Derek Hansen. So, hi, Derek. Hello. Derek, thank you for uh, having me. You, you bet. Derek is the author of the book. Uh, the Ultimate Hang. I got. I don't know if you can see it in the glare here or not, but The Ultimate Hang. And he was the author and illustrator. There's some really great illustrations in that book as well. Um, a great introduction to hammock camping. Uh, it was the first place I went when I started deciding that laying on the ground wasn't the way I wanted to 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 spend my the rest of my years as <laughs> scoutmaster. Um, and yeah, it had great information. It was very accessible uh, and now that I've used it through summer camp and a few other camping trips with the scouts, we thought we'd have Derek on to talk briefly about hammock camping in general and then more specifically about scouting and, and how that relates to hammock camping. Because Derek is also a scoutmaster. Is that right? That's correct. All right. Yeah. And and scoutmaster in a couple of different troops already, so a lot of fun. All right. Now, before before we get going, uh, if I may be rude for a moment, <laughs> let me remind everybody that this is a semi-live presentation, and uh, we will be going through. Uh, Arlen's going to talk with Derek for a little while, and then we welcome your questions about hammock camping, and you can send your questions to Clark C L A R K E at ScoutCircle dot org. Clark at scoutcircle.org and uh, email your questions and we'll get Derek to answer them for you. I am done now and you may continue. <laughs> yeah, we, we kind of forgot the, the whole question part. <laughs> we, you do this a few times and you forget that, uh, that you need that, that in there as well. So, um, yeah, all right, so let's jump right into it, Derek. You've got uh, a little bit on, on hammock camping in general. Shall we, shall we start with that? Yeah, fantastic. So would you like to go over the presentation now? Sure. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see if I can make this work. This is a presentation that I put together um, for several different organizations and scouting groups. In fact, if you would like to use this presentation in your own troops, we can sh certainly share this with you guys. So... We're going to try to, I was given 10 minutes to do this, right? So let's see if we can make this work. Um, I love I love hammock camp, and I, I don't even know if I can express, as Arlen had mentioned, probably like a lot of you, I've spent enough nights on the ground looking for that perfect spot without any roots, without any rocks, and it just doesn't work, you know? And, and also trying to find a, a cushion that is comfortable enough but can pack well, it's just horrible. So... When I discovered hammock camping, it really just completely changed my outlook on camping with the scouts and also the scouts in general. Now, one of the benefits of hammock camping that I really like is that you can really go anywhere. Hammock camping allows you, as we talk about in Leave No Trace and also in the basic, you know, how to, how to pick a site, is that good campsites are found. They're not made. And generally speaking, with a hammock, you can pretty much go anywhere. You can hang a hammock over very difficult terrain, sloping terrain, with uh, places even over water. Sometimes campsites turn into water bogs after a nice rainstorm, so you can literally hang above it all. Uh, as I mentioned with Leave No Trace, hammocks are ideal for Leave No Trace. They have minimal impact. As many of us who have camped a lot know, 
when you get to a camping location, it tends to get compacted and leave no trace guidelines, they want us to focus that impact so it doesn't spread. But unfortunately, we, we tend to do that in tents because we don't want to camp right in the middle of that puddle. But with hammocks, we minimize that impact. Uh, in fact, when I wrote my book, I worked with the Leave No Trace Center, the education director, to get it approved for Leave No Trace. They're actually very excited at the center. They think that hammocks are fantastic for Leave No Trace. And when you do it correctly, uh, with hammock straps, you can see this gentleman is is pitched his hammock over a durable surface, which is ideal. Same with this on the Appalachian Trail. It's very difficult to put tents in those kinds of locations, but with hammocks, it's very ideal. Now, also with hammocks, a lot of people say, well, it's great for lounging, it's great for the summer, but what about full four season? I hammock camp year-round, and as some of these illustrations show, um, with a hammock, you are pitched with a tarp that is ideal for snow shedding. This is a classic photo of a winter camp with a hammock. A lot of dome tents and some other maybe less than ideal tents that we tend to buy for some scout troops aren't really four season worthy. They're great for maybe three season camping, but with a tarp set up like this, you actually have four seasons built in just by how you pitch the tent. And let's talk about room. In a typical tent, you have very few spaces for gear. You, sometimes a tent, like some of the Eureka tents that we're familiar with, have a small vestibule outside in the living area, but in a, in a hammock camping situation, you've got the entire floor space available to you for all that extra gear you've got to bring for, for winter support. Additionally, people concer have concerns about, what if, there, what if I go to a camp where there's no trees? Uh, for example, in this, this individual is camping in rocks. Well, you can... You can hang out in uh, where, where there's no trees, just with the right equipment. This is a, a hangout where I did uh, at Lake Powell, where we actually, there are no trees to speak of, but with the right stand and equipment, you can hang out where there's no trees. Here's an example of those climbing cleats that you can use to uh, anchor into some rocks. National jamborees are very popular, and camperees, where you go to these wide open places where there are no trees, or actually there probably are tons of trees, but the campsite has been selected to accommodate tents, and so you can't just go off into the trees. Uh, this is an example of a Hennessy hammock who brought this really cool modular hammock stand that can accommodate basically a hammock village, and you can construct these very inexpensively for an entire troop. There are places that I will admit are very difficult. Uh, where I come from in Arizona, there are places in the Saguaros uh, down in the valley by Phoenix where it's not just impossible, not just difficult to hang on a, on a cactus, but it's actually federally regulated that, that you don't actually hang stuff on some of those uh, vegetation. And one of the first principles that we know about and leave no trace is plan ahead and prepare. And so of course, just like any trip, you want to make sure that the place that you're going is ideal for for hammock camping. There are times where it's not ideal, and it doesn't work out perfectly. I did a camp out just this uh, February down in the Grand Canyon, and we had to work with the rangers to make sure that we could actually hang there and make special accommodations to do so. Uh, if worse comes to worse and you need to hang a hammock, like that's what the scout brought, but they don't. there's no trees, you can pitch a hammock on the ground. It turns into a great bivy tent. In, in this example, the, the tarp works as your uh, protection from the rain or other elements, and the hammock itself becomes a, a bug-protected uh, bivy sack. So you can pitch it on the ground, and it works fantastic. Hammock camping is ideal for groups, and what I mean by that is just in the places that you can camp, you can actually con or, uh, concentrate a lot of hammocks in a central location. In this example, this is where we had scouts at a campsite, and we stacked them like bunk beds. Uh, the scouts love this. So you can actually save weight as well. Uh, the scouts love to, and this is an example of a scout troop with some hammocks. Notice the durable surface that they're on. They're all grouped together. They've picked a great spot for hammocks, so they minimize their impact over a large area. This is another example of uh, my son and I actually bunk bed style with hammocks. And when we did this year for our summer camp experience, we did a 50 miler. And all of the scouts were in hammocks and we shared tents 
and it was great because we could all be in a you know in centralized locations sharing tents. It was so fun to hear the scouts, just like you would expect um, when scouts bunk together in tents. They're talking with each other. They're playing games. Um, they love this kind of interaction that that is made possible through the hammock experience. Uh, this is another example, another photo of a jamboree with those modular hammock stands that I showed. These kinds of villages, you know, it's with with tents. One thing that kind of happens, even in a like in a jamboree experience with hundreds of of tents, you've got this tent village, but you still tend to be isolated in that small little pup tent. So it's really only the scouts that are in that little pup tent tend to communicate with each other, and typically it's a buddy team, and that's great. But in with hammock camping there's a lot more visibility and so you may have two, three, five, ten scouts all in a little circle and they all can communicate with each other, have that sense of brotherhood that we, we like to use with scouting. So they work great with, with, a, uh, with a group. Now let's dive into a little bit of history with hammocks. Um, one of the things I love to tell people is that Christopher Columbus was is credited with discovering the hammock when he came to the uh, Americas we all know that he was looking for that fast route to India but he didn't discover that he didn't discover the gold and some of the wealth he was looking for but he did discover the hammock and it revolutionized shipping it's it's thanks to Christopher Columbus he exported the hammock and it brought it back and it was used in shipping now the hammock that he brought back is similar to this image you see on your screen which is what we call a gathered end hammock where it's just a basic netting and that's what was used in the naval ships after when Christopher Columbus came back. Um, here are some photos of, of uh, well, let's go back to that, <clears throat> where you can see the, uh, the naval hammocks in use. Naval hammocks were used all the way into uh, the Korean War, so very recently until they, they decided to, uh, to switch out hammocks for something a little more modern. Many of you may not even know this, but uh, Baden-Powell also recommended using a hammock. This is the Ashanti hammock. This is uh, in his guide to scouting. He specifically talks about the Ashanti hammock and how cool it is to hang a bed above the critters, above the bugs, with a simple tarp as your covering. Um, I was actually and pretty what, excited to find that. What's the name of that hammock again? Uh, Ashanti, A S H A N T I, the Ashanti hammock. Uh, he kind of dis <laughs> this was used in some of those African villages that he discovered in his uh, exploits in Africa. So. He just brought it back with him as well, the Ashanti hammock. Pretty cool. A lot of people, sounds, when they think of the hammock... Sounds important. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know, anything that Baden-Powell does, you you got to take notice. And the fact that he did the Ashanti hammock, I'm all for it. All right. So uh, a lot of people, when I talk to hammocks, or that talk hammocks, they typically think of this guy right here. Um, this is probably the most uncomfortable, unbalanced hammock you can ever find. If anybody has had any experience with what we call a spreader bar, rope hammock. They're, they're kind of fun, but you get waffle back. You, uh, they're very tippy. So if you have an opportunity to get a hammock, avoid this kind. This is not what we, this is a more modern uh, invention by a riverboat captain. Didn't, uh, I'm not real excited about. But anyway, real quick, let's jump into the, some of the basics of hammock camping. Uh, number one, use tree straps. The, the wide webbing helps protect the bark, helps give you a good anchor point to set up a hammock. It's easy to stay dry by using a tarp, uh, just as you would in uh, like a patrol tarp. It's a very similar uh, experience, but there's a lot of modularity there. Staying warm is really easy as well. You can use the same gear that you use tent camping into a hammock. There are some specialized gear. You can get into that if you want to, but you don't have to. You can hammock camp right now with the scouts. And also essential for camping, really to be a viable shelter, you need to be bug free. And there are hammocks that come with bug netting, uh, but you can also add it after the fact. So all of these all of these factors that you would think of with regular camping, you can do it with hammock camping. So it uh, looks like I ran over just a few minutes, but there you go. Any any questions? I'm going to switch over now unless you want me to keep up the, uh, the presentation. Oh, yeah, you can switch back. That's great. Yeah, so <laughs> that's the, the whirlwind tour through. Um, uh, I think you you hit on a lot of of the the questions in general for hammock camping. Uh, um, maybe we should get a little bit into the specifics around around scouting. Um, you've obviously have examples in there with uh, scout troops and things like that. Have you found um, have you found a wide 
adoption of hammocks, or is it something that that the troop decides as a as a group that they're going to do, or uh, you know, is it kind of onesie twosies, and then everybody realizes that's kind of the way they want to go, or you know, is it kind of still mixed? Good question. You know, in my experience. Um, Sometimes hammock camping starts out onesie twosie where you have a couple people that that try it. In my troops, I typically have a pretty fast adoption rate when they see, especially with the new scouts, will go out back on a backpacking trip, for example, and they'll notice that I've got a pretty light setup. It's pretty easy to use. And number one is that I'm I'm comfortable. I'm off the ground. I'm dry. Uh, we had an experience when I was in Virginia. We were in a campsite and my leaders and I were in a in hammocks and the scouts were all in their tents and that you know it just rained cats and dogs and in the morning they were literally in a little lake these all these tents the next camp out we had converted all of the scouts to hammocks you know it only takes a few experiences where scouts when you see that advantage when you see some of the advantages like I, I'm no longer going to be suffering through this um, and you know hammock camping has been growing in popularity generally for the, the last number of years, and we're seeing, seeing a real surge. One of the indicators is um, the outdoor shows that are that you see, like in Salt Lake City, the outdoor retailer show. Sure. More and more manufacturers are showing hammocks or hammock-related gear. They're seeing it as a trend, and, and I think you're going to see more and more of it as mainstream manufacturers cater to the demand that you're seeing in the marketplace. You know, I uh, <laughs> I, I got into it from the standpoint of you know, spending a night in, in a backpacking tent, same backpacking tent I'd had for, you know, probably 15 years and had used it and, and loved it. It's a great tent, um, you know, but I was just, you know, kind of tossing and turning and and, and woke up in the morning. It's like, you know, everybody I talk to about hammock camping, they, they love, you know, they, they love the night's sleep. They, everybody says it's the best night's sleep they've ever had in the outdoors. And so, you know, I thought I'd give it a try. So that's when I started pulling up, you know, like your book and 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 pinging people I know that that do that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, it it made a huge difference for sure. Um, yeah, I, I think the comfort is probably the number one reason. When 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 you boil everything else down, all the other reasons for hammock camping, it's it does boil down to comfort, especially for the scouters like you and I who we've been out enough years, our backs are getting sore. We're we're feeling like, hey, we, we love scouting. We, lo we want to be out there with the boys, but I can't drag along my, you know, six-inch mattress anymore. It's just it's too much, especially if the boys want to go out backpacking. So it is a great option for revolutionizing it for scouters. But even for younger scouts, I've seen, what, again, my, some experiences in Virginia. Well, I, had a, I had a troop of boys that were probably a little more urban, a little more of the Game Boy generation, and they... They didn't see the appeal of hammock, or excuse me, the, the appeal of camping, the appeal of the uh, the outdoors, and yet with hammocks, that has, it, it's like I guess it's like a new, a uh, trigger for their brain, something different, something unique, something original, and it was an eye opener for them. Like this is cool, we can try this. This is exciting. So even for some of the younger scouts, it was an opportunity to reintroduce the outdoors in a way they hadn't thought of. So I've noticed that it takes a little bit more technical skill, better. Planning of campsites than you you know than you know your standard dome tent that you know any any scout will you know stick a couple poles in and it, and it stands up like it's supposed to and and that is there is there really a lower limit to the age for a scout that uh, that can effectively hammock camp? You know I I think that like a lot of things in scouting we we tend to get into routines and. Anything that we do often and that we do repetitively is going to be easier for us to do. So I, I really don't see hammocks being any more difficult or having a higher learning curve than tents. But it is true that you know, for a group of, for especially scouters, when we're we're kind of used to the way things are going, you know, we we've got our our patrol box and this is how we set it up. We've got our patrol fly. This is how we set it up. Um, hammocks can introduce that in in. A, and be like, oh my gosh, how do we how do we do work with this? This isn't the system. We can't let this into this into the camp. I would say that it's a lot easier for the scouts. They they adopt it very easily and very quickly, and the actual setup is a lot easier. I mean, I've maybe like you have seen some young scouts struggling with tent poles, and you're just sure. holding back so much to say, okay, I'm going to let the patrol method work here. 
but they're going to be setting that up for hours because they're mixing up the poles and whatever. Sometimes hammocks can be very simple and efficient in the sense that there's sometimes less components. You can do it very simply and very uh, efficiently if you want to. Certainly you can complicate it with a really complicated tarp fly or something like that. Uh, the other thing that I think going off of your question that I wanted to bring up is I like... For me, scouting is, you know, we, we have what's called built-in redundancies or built-in systems that help reinforce the scouting methods or the techniques that we're using, the, the skills that we want the scouts to learn. For example, you could buy a, a tent that has those easy, quick adjust uh, guy lines and, and hardware devices. And uh, I had a mentor when I was becoming a scout leader that says, you know, I cut all those handicaps off, you know, because we're trying to teach those scouts to learn the taut line hitch or learn the two half hitches. Um, using a hammock does the same thing. You can use simple knots to attach the suspension, like the you can use the lark's head and the, the, uh, the bolin and um, the, the sheet bend are all the basic knots that you want to reinforce with scouting. Use them with hammocks. It's a fantastic way to keep the boys learning. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> That's one thing I've noticed is is there's there's a lot of different knots that you can you can use and apply uh, when when setting up a hammock and the tarp that goes over it and there's a little bit of uh, creativity and outdoor engineering that goes into into getting it set up um, you know the, the way that you want to. You know, one of the advantages that I hadn't really thought much about but is great. Uh, you know, I think I cut cut the 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 weight down to like a third of what the tent was. It was. Um, it was fantastic. The, oh, um, for sure. It, it, it went really fast. Uh, um, and then, of course, <laughs> now I'm looking at everything else and wondering what else I can cut weight out of because it's. it turns out that that's mostly me rather than the equipment. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, me, I got into, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. sorry. Let, me, let me break in for just a second and remind everybody sure. that you can send your question uh, for Derek to Clark at ScoutCircle.org. Okay, Clark at ScoutCircle.org. All right, thanks. <laughs> that that's was kind of like a, uh, a radio broadcaster. We got to make sure we get the call sign in there. That's right. Yeah, we've got the, the our, got to pay the advertisers or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, you know when I oh go ahead. Oh, I w uh, I was just gonna say. Um, um, I was going to bring up expense, but if you got something else related to to the weight side of it, um, certainly. Yeah, so well, let me that. let me mention something about weight, and then I'll segue into uh, to cost because that's a really good question that a lot of people have about about hammock camping. Um, you know, when I first got into scouting, I probably did like a lot of people do. I I thought of what I needed to buy. I bought like a five pound tent, a five pound sleeping bag, a five pound backpack, and before I had put anything in my any other gear, you know, I'm, I'm up at 15 pounds or more just in some basics. So yeah, hammocks can really cut down the weight, um, but th there is a, there is a uh, I should be cautionary there, because I, you can buy hammocks that are very lightweight, that can get you down into the ounces instead of pounds for a single shelter, but you can also go the opposite direction. So I don't want to give people the, the impression that just buying a hammock will mean you're all of a sudden lightweight. Uh, you still have to be conscientious about what you're going to buy, but at the same time, uh, in, in, inherent in the design, because there there aren't additional poles that you need. There's not additional uh, you know floor coverings or double walled tents that can just add up the ounces. So it's but it can go both ways. Um, and speaking of that, and talking about affordability, um, hammocks. And I probably should say this too. But before I dive in, there's a caveat. Hammocks can be just as expensive as tents. However, with uh, to get, to get scouts into hammocking, it doesn't have to cost a fortune. There are people that buy these top-of-the-line hammocks, and you could be $300 into just the basic hammock kit, plus if you want to get specialized insulation and everything else. However, when I, I've got a troop that is, you know, they come from modest means, and we're in the middle right now of, of a, our monthly theme in October is going to be hammock camping, so we're going to build our own hammocks. So the, the cost for each scout, you're talking between $10 and $11 to actually make their own hammock. So you can do it very inexpensively and provide a learning opportunity for the scouts. So it doesn't have to cost a lot. The, the webbing that you get, the, the material you buy, 
uh, if you if you want to do it yourself, that's probably the the least expensive way. But there are hammocks you can find for uh, minimal amounts of money. Just so yes, you can go both both sides of the spectrum. So what is the minimum kit you would recommend for a a for a scout that's interested in doing this? What um, what would you say are, are are the absolute essentials before you went heading off into the woods? <laughs> well, you need the hammock. Um, the, one of the uh, the best hammocks that I found that if you just want to buy it off the shelf is uh, the the Grand Trunk Ultralight. It's a twenty dollar hammock retail, but you can find it like at uh, Camp Moore or other places for fifteen dollars or less. So. You definitely need the hammock. You'll, you're going to need uh, webbing straps to create the anchor points and a tarp. Typically, those are the, the three items that you're going to have to purchase, build, or buy that to, to make hammock work. You can still use the sleeping bag and the sleeping pad that you used in a tent because just like in a tent, you, ne you need insulation. So really, it's just, um, just the hammock and the, the shelter. Now, some people will probably argue and say, well, what about the bug protection, you know? And I, and I know for myself, when I lived in Virginia, no questions asked. Uh, for almost three seasons, you've got to have bug protection. Um, however, for some scouts, I've seen scouts bivy it and not really care. So, I, I, you know, that could be an opinion there in terms of whether or not you want bug protection for the actual hammock. Um, sometimes the best bug protection is just time of day when you when you uh, are active a lot of the scouts are up and at them very late into the evening anyway when when the mosquitoes start to go to bed so you can almost work around it for some scouts but yeah having a bug net is a, is could be very essential for some trips and you definitely want to have something whether it's a mosquito protection like a permethrin or or a deet protection or a bug net physical protection i can see that that being kind of dependent on where you are in the country too. I imagine that the bugs are are worse in some places rather than others. But uh, exactly, yeah. And where I'm currently living in Arizona, mosquitoes are not a problem at all. So yeah, I don't. We don't need bug protection as much as you might need it in other places. Sure. Yeah. So I I did want to mention you. You've written up an article for Scouting Magazine that that, that appeared last year. Um, so this isn't brand new to, to even scouting. This is something that, that's been around for a bit. Um, so nobody's going to look at you like you're a complete alien if you, uh, <laughs> if you, if you start doing the, the hammock camping and on, on these camperies and things like that. Is, that. is that what you found to be true? Oh, yeah, absolutely. The, um, as I mentioned earlier, hammock camping has is, is really been growing. And if you haven't seen, if, whether it's your own someone in your own troop or you've noticed some, somebody else at a campsite or while you're backpacking, uh, hammock camping is, is really growing steadily. So, and, and the Boy Scouts of America, in fact, if you saw your summer uh, catalog from the scout shop, they sell hammocks in the catalog as well. So it's been used in uh, camperies, or excuse me, the, the National Jamborees, they've had hammocks there since 2010 or 9, I believe. Uh, Hennessy Hammock, uh, one of the major retailers of camping hammocks, has been a partner of the Boy Scouts of America since they began several years ago. So it's it's definitely something that the Boy Scouts is has on their radar, and currently they've been very supportive of it as long as it's done correctly. So um, we're getting close to the question and answer part. So we definitely want to point out again that you can email Clark at C L A R K E uh, Clark at ScoutCircle.org if you have questions related to hammocks or how that relates to a scout troop or, or things that we haven't mentioned yet. Um, but we do have a few questions. Um, first one, let's start. Um, you had mentioned uh, build it, having the boys make their own hammocks. Do you have plans or other resources that they can use, new other troops can do? Um, you know, for Yes, absolutely. Uh, we can share that with uh, Scout Circle. I've got a couple of different designs that we're using. To, to make a hammock is, is almost as, as simple as taking a, a queen-size sheet and gathering up the ends with, uh, with rope. So, but if you want to add a bug net or something a little more complicated, yes, there, there, I have some designs that we can use, and we can get those out to the group. Okay, that one came from uh, Jason Wacker, who is a, an assistant scoutmaster for Troop 534, 
in Flowery Branch, Georgia. So they might, yeah, they might need the bug protection. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do. He had another question as well. Um, that was around the hammocks that they use. They have uh, Eno hammocks. Um, yep. The the double nests. Um, and he has a fly for his. He says his son's been uh, using just a, a blue tarp and was wondering if you had any suggestions on where to look for a good um, model tarp that, uh, that he might use for, for, for his son. So for a tarp, um, you know, what we're doing for our troop, or at least what I'm encouraging the boys to do, again, if you're, if you're approaching it from a, a cost standpoint, you can always get one of those cheap poly tarps from, uh, you know, Walmart or an outdoor store. An 8x10 tarp works just fine. Uh, it might be a little heavier, maybe a little bulkier than the, you know, more expensive options, but there's nothing wrong with those, you know, blue tarps as we call them. Mm -hmm. uh, an 8x10 is, would be the smallest I would get. The ideal size for a tarp for a hammock is an, a, about 9 feet by 9 feet. If you can get it within about nine feet by nine feet, that would that way you could, you pitch it on a like a diamond over the hammock, and it it only requires two stake points, and it works great. An eight by ten, when you pitch it on the on the diagonal, would create what we call an asymmetric uh, tarp. So you'd have to lay in in line with that tarp, but it works just great. In fact, Hennessy Hammock, which is one of the top of the line models, all of their base hammocks are asymmetric use asymmetric tarps, so they, they work well. Um, while we're on the subject of tarps, Charles F. asked the question, please discuss methods of keeping dry in wet weather. So I'm assuming um, I'm assuming the tarp has something to do with that as well. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that's really one of the advantages of hammocks, when you think about it, is the ability to pitch a tarp while it's raining before you put your gear. One of the things that I've always hated about tents is that while you're, if, if it's raining and you've got to camp and you've got to pitch a tent, basically your entire tent gets wet. It depends on how fast and how skilled you are, but there's very few tents on the market that allow you to pitch the, um, you know, the rain fly first, especially if it's one of those models that we're familiar with that have very minimal, you know, uh, rain flies, like a three-season or two-season rain fly. But with a hammock, you set up the tarp first, and then you've got this, just again, it's a, it's a patrol tarp. We're all familiar with the patrol tarp. We typically pitch one over our dining area. Uh, so you're really just doing that over your campsite now. And so you've got this great dry space uh, that you can hang your hammock underneath. You can use, uh, and when if you look through the presentation that I'll send to the group if, if you'd like to, you can get what we call winter-sized or winter-style tarps that can basically enclose all the way around like, a, uh, like a, t a tent you might see at summer camp, you know, a walled tent. Mm -hmm. You can make a tent or a tarp just like that and have 360 degree protection, not only from the elements, but also for uh, ultimate privacy. So depending on the tarp you buy, you know, if you bought like a 12 by 10 or a 10 by 10 tarp, one of those blue poly tarps, you could actually configure it to close it down with absolute protection. It's, I find it, a tarp style is one of the best ways to stay dry uh, versus a tent. So yes, you can stay dry, no problem. Okay, um, now I'm going to ask Clark a question. So Clark. Um, yes? Somewhere, somewhere behind the avatar, there we go. Uh, Clark, um, we have a couple of, of books to give away. Aha! So, um, and the book, of course, is the Ultimate Hang book uh, that, that Derek wrote. Um, to give, a, give out to two people um, looking for an email question. What was, what was the email question? Well, first of all, the email is going to be right what you see on the screen right now, Clark at scoutcircle.org. So go ahead, open up your email right now because... <laughs> The first two people to get the right answer, we're going to make sure that they get a copy of The Ultimate Hang by our guest. <clears throat> so the question is, is tell us the name of Baden-Powell's hammock. Baden-Powell, <laughs> founder of scouting, tell us the name 
of the hammock that he uses. You heard it a little earlier in this broadcast, and we'll see how well you listen. <laughs> so it, it wasn't it wasn't uh, uh, wasn't Hennessy. Um, let's no, see, it wasn't no. the blue tarp. So no. yeah. all right, well we'll see we'll see how it uh, how it, it works starts out. with an A. All right, there you go, perfect. Okay. <laughs> All right, Derek, I got a bunch more questions, but actually the one that I personally get asked the most is about how do you sleep in a hammock that, you know, do you sleep in that curved shape along, you know, how, how do you sleep in a hammock and how could it possibly be comfortable to sleep like that? Oh, uh, you know, that is, that's an excellent question. We should have addressed that very first, actually. So um, when when you see a hammock and it's, it has that familiar banana curve, you know, and, and we, we think this has got to be so uncomfortable. And you're right. If you slept end-to-end -end like a banana, it would be uncomfortable. Um, and then that's not how you sleep in a hammock. To sleep in a hammock, especially that, well, that's called a Brazilian-style or a Mayan-style hammock, the kind that Christopher Columbus uh, discovered. The, the natives, they sleep on a slight diagonal, I'm guessing it's probably around 30 degrees, but all you do is you slip your feet off uh, to one side of just off of center, and your head would go the opposite side off of center, and you actually drop into this really nice ergonomic flat position. It's not it's not flat like you would be on a board. It's actually better than than sleeping on a flat bed because uh, you know people spend thousands of dollars on these certa sleep number beds, you know, that where they're perfectly contoured and comfortable. Hammocks do it naturally and automatically. They take all the pressure points off of your back. As you turn on that diagonal position, you get an amazing flat lay. And But it's not only the flatness of it, but like I said, it's the ergonomics. It takes those pressure points away, and that's what makes it so comfortable. Now, part of the way that you get that diagonal lay is you have to hang the hammock with a proper sag. And the way you do that is... Technically speaking, we, we talk about um, the angle of, this, of the suspension coming off the tree needs to be around 30 degrees. Uh, the trick to doing that is if you make the, the, the uh, like, a, like you're shooting a gun with your thumb and your finger, mm -hmm. if you take the point from your thumb to the, your pointer, that's 30 degrees. So if you put this up to your strap, so if my, if my hammock strap is this pencil and that's coming off of the, uh, the tree, I can just put my hand like this. If, if the angle is coming off a little more straight like this, then you know that you've got a very tight pitch and it's not going to work very well for uh, to sleep in a diagonal. You won't be able to do it. But if you get a, uh, an angle of at least 30 degrees you know, and test it, then you know that you'll be able to sleep in a, on a diagonal. So it's very easy to set up, actually. You can, the, the bigger the hammock, the more dramatic you can um, get that that loop, or excuse me, that sag, and you can sleep almost perpendicular to the suspension and get a very flat lay. Okay, uh, nice. You know, I found that I, I actually settle into that 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 spot pretty easily. As soon as you kind of move off axis, it kind of it's it's exactly where you end up. And you know, yep. you, you're right. That's the that's the the comfortable spot for sure. Hey guys, let me let me jump in to tell you that we have our two winners. We have the two winners. Wow. Um, people have been sent, I've gotten quite a few replies and <laughs> correct ones, but the first two that told us that Baden Powell, the name of Baden Powell's hammock was, and shall we say it all together, the Ashanti. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so uh, a copy of our guest Derek Hansen's book, The Ultimate Hang, will go to Blaze Vitale and to Jason Wacker. So congratulations, but we've got our winners. Great. You can still send your questions in, uh, and that's Clark at ScoutCircle.org. Please send your questions in. Yeah, we've still got about 20 minutes worth of questions to go through here, so um, that'll, be, that'll be great. Um, okay, so going back through a couple of these questions we've got here, um, as long as we're talking about sleeping position, uh, Jim Crutchfield says, I'm a stomach and side sleeper. Does that work for a hammock, or, or is that kind of kind of it? Very good question. Um, you know, let me first describe hammocks generally again because probably like you, when I sleep in bed, I, I, I tend to be like a rotisserie chicken. 
you know, you sleep on your back for a few minutes, then your back gets sore. So you turn over to your side until your arm gets sore, and pretty soon you, you know, you're kind of rotating in bed uh, because of those sore spots. So when I first got into a hammock, I would probably characterize myself as a stomach sleeper or a side sleeper because that's where I found that I could sleep the longest in bed. However, when I first slept in a hammock, I laid out on my back, and I slept on my back the entire night. I was absolutely floored, and I woke up refreshed, and I said that was really what converted me because I, sure. I couldn't remember tossing and turning at all. So before you describe yourself as a, like a side sleeper or a stomach sleeper, give hammock camping a try. Sleep on your back and see what happens. Uh, at least for me, it was, it was a life-changing experience because I, I now have hammocks all over in my house, and it's a lot of fun. Now, that said, <laughs> yes, you can sleep on your side in a hammock. And I find every once in a while, you know, if I'm having a hard time falling asleep for whatever reason, you know, I can curl up and, and sleep on my side. I can get in this fetal position. All of those work fine. There are some hammocks. Uh, well, sleeping on your stomach is difficult in a gathered-in hammock because... Uh, like I said, you're in a kind of an ergonomic shape. It's not completely flat, and so you could have a slight bow in your back. And, and that depends on how you pitch the hammock. However, there are a few hammocks that are they're a different style of hammock that you can sleep on your back, you can sleep on your side, and your stomach without any problem. Those hammocks are called bridge hammocks, and I've got an illustration mm. in my book. And, yeah, you, they're they're fantastic. So if you... If you find, and some people do, they, they just a gathered-in hammock is not the ideal situation, but they get into a bridge hammock, and that works perfectly for them. So, yes, th but there are some caveats on, on side sleeping and stomach sleeping. Okay, yeah, you know, uh, one, of, one of the jokes I found that I tell quite a bit when talking to people about hammock camping is I used to think I was a morning person when I was out camping, um, but it turns out I was just so uncomfortable sleeping <laughs> on the ground that, <laughs> that, that I, I was just getting up earlier than everybody else. Um, and then as soon as I got the, the hammock, it wasn't so much I was a morning person anymore. So, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can find... Oh, what? for me too, I think sometimes uh, I get deeper sleeps. In fact, there's a study that I've got in the Scouting Magazine article, actually, of, of the effects of hammock camping. Actually, you get deeper, more rhythmic REM sleep. So you can actually find you get a better sleep long-term with the hammock than you might get in bed. So For sure. We'll see. So there's a lot of choices out there, and one of the questions we got was, uh, what is Clark's favorite hammock? So that came from Chris Gilbert. So what, what is your favorite hammock, Clark? Um... Well, I'm not a hammock expert, I should say, but um, I want to echo what you said about sleep position, because I usually sleep on my stomach or my side, and I have no problem getting sleep in a hammock on my back, and I use, I have a Hennessy um, Explorer, asymmet the asymmetrical one, um, and uh, while, I'm, while I've got the floor for a moment, uh, Derek, the, those were um, offered early on. They were only offered in that bottom entry kind of uh, setup. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Yep. Yeah. And it, what it what? So I have had the hammock actually for probably five or six years, but I stopped using it because getting in through the bottom, the the and. I will try to describe this to everybody without taking up too much time, but the, it has a Velcroed slit in the bottom, and basically you had to kind of worm your way up through the bottom to get in the hammock, which was covered with, with bug netting. And um, I really didn't like doing that. Uh, but I did find somebody online, believe it or not, who actually modifies Hennessy hammocks and puts a zipper in them. And I yep. sent that... I, I sent that off this summer. There, it's uh, 2QZQ is Correct. the name of the folks that do it. And I sent that off this summer, and they did it for me, and I used it uh, during our trip to Canada, and it was great. I mean, I really loved it. And, Derek, this whole hammock craziness, this kind of hammock tribe that exists now, has spawned all of these really interesting little cottage industries like Somebody who modifies an old Hennessy, Hennessy hammock. Um, 
can you can you address that a little bit? All the kind of cool stuff that's out there that um, people have made to to kind of you can soup up your hammock like like a race car, you know? Like, <laughs> oh yeah, um, and that's that's an interesting kind of question or or, or commentary because I'll ha I'll admit uh, again camping. I've always loved camping. I've grown up with camping, but I never got into, you know, there, there's, there was something about hammock camping that kind of sparked a light inside of my mind in terms of, um, I don't know, just ingenuity and, and creativity and, like, there, there's, it's just a lot more than just uh, setting up a tent and going to sleep at night. Uh, for a lot of people, we, we shop around for a tent and we're probably looking at, I'm looking at cost, I'm looking at uh, if it, how heavy it is. But with hammocks, you can actually customize and, and modularize it to exactly how you want it to be, the right size, the right amount of rain protection. So there are cottage industries that really cater to all kinds of ways to customize a hammock. So what, what you had mentioned is, uh, is a great one. Uh, 2QZQ do a lot of different modifications to hammocks. There, there are companies that specialize in hammock insulation, so there are a lot of great op options for keeping a hammock warm, uh, keeping it dry. There are all kinds of amazing tarps and shelters, some shelters that have built-in doors. Um, I think another in a place where there's been a lot of innovation with hammocks has been the suspension. Uh, you know, a lot of people, I would mentioned earlier that you can set up hammocks very simply and efficiently with the right knots. However, a lot of people get tired of knots. They want something a little faster, quicker, that they can just sling up. So there's all kinds of little hardware devices, lightweight cordage. Um, so yeah, it's pretty amazing. And there's websites. Uh, I kind of skipped over it in my presentation. I have a website that I maintain, a blog, where I talk about a lot of different innovations in hammock camping. But there's also a forum online, hammockforums.net, that uses, uh, there's a lot of people on there all talking about you know, have you tried this material for insulation? Have you tried this for uh, insulation? It's just pretty amazing what people talk about and how innovative people get and excited about something as silly as sleeping outside in, in the in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> I, the hammock forum is is amazing. It is. It's just really amazing. I don't, I can't think of any question you would have about hammocks that you didn't get answered probably in a matter of minutes if you went on the hammock forum. Yeah, yeah sure. and the people there are so great to work with. They're very friendly. Uh, I When I first discovered Hammock Forum several years ago, I, n I never considered myself like a forum junkie, you know, those people that, that troll around, and, and uh, it can get kind of violent. Not violent, but, you know, sometimes forums can get out of hand. But Hammock Forum has done a really great job at keeping a very high uh, level of discussion and commentary and friendliness that... Uh, is, that's what drew me in, and, and that's really, Hammock Forums is where I began to develop my illustrations for my book, because I had an audience that just loved uh, to see, because one of the knacks that I had was the ability to illustrate and visualize a technique, and those illustrations became popular enough that people were saying, hey, we would like a collection of them, because we in the spirit of sharing and discovering, it was a great tool, and Hammock Forums is still great for that. Yeah. You know, the cottage industry side of this is, is truly amazing. I, uh, when I decided that it was time to take the plunge, I went with uh, a company that was here in Colorado, uh, the War Bonnet Outdoors, and, and they were amazing as far as answering questions. Um, you know, I had a very tight time constraint. I was only... I was only in town for a few days before I was leaving for summer camp, and I was like, you know, I need to get this and anything else I need, you know, in order to set this up. Um, and you know, and they said invited me out to to come pick it up at their shop rather than having it shipped. Um, you know, walked me through how to set it up. It, it, it's amazing. I mean, these <laughs> these are not things that you would necessarily get from really large companies, but there's there's a lot of um, a lot of small companies out there that are all very passionate about about this, this side of, out, of outdoor gear, for sure. Yep, for sure. The cottage industry has been very good at being uh, customer friendly and trying to help and get you what you need, so something to check out. I've got a, not only in the back of my book, but on my website, theultimatehang.com, I have a list of hammock manufacturers that you can browse through to see all of the different cottage people 
and I keep that list up to date. So if you want to see all the different cottage vendors, check out theultimatehang.com, and you can ch you know see what they sell and see what they specialize in. So we got about ten minutes left. I want to remind everybody one more time to uh, send any questions you've got to Clark at ScoutCircle.org. Uh, C L A R K E, um, and we'll try to get them answered. I've got a few more through here that maybe we can kind of burn through and make sure that uh, that we get get at least something answered there. Um, uh, let's see. Tom Hassler from Troop Nine in Connecticut said. Um, he picked up a basic gathered in hammock and, and a copy of your book, which is always good. Um, what's the best way to add bug, bug protection to a hammock? Good question. Um, if you follow my blog, I, I just reviewed a bug net, uh, what we call an aftermarket bug net. So I think it's going to come out tomorrow. So check my blog for that because you can start to see what an aftermarket bug net looks like. But you can buy, if, if you've purchased, in fact, I really think that that uh, the way that this uh, is that uh, this person has done it is is really a great way. Buy a simple hammock and add on the modules or the components as you need them, because then you can it gives you a lot more options to add on or take away as you need to. So they they do sell. There's several companies that sell uh, aftermarket bug nets. Some of them are what I consider 360 degree bug nets that they cover not only the top but also underneath the hammock and you just feed the hammock through the bug net and cinch the end. Some of them have a horizontal, some have vertical zippers, and it's really an easy entry system. The one that I'm going to review tomorrow, it doesn't have a zipper. It's actually a, a very lightweight bug net. It's a 360 bug net. It only weighs six ounces, but it's a full protection bug net. So check it out. Yes, they're available. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, Master Hansen has... Uh, the question of what tips do you have for areas that have few or no trees and the boys are wanting to use hammocks? Good question. Well, in my, in my presentation, I mentioned that specifically because it, it is a problem in some areas, especially the desert southwest. Um, again, plan ahead and prepare. If, if you're going car camping, there's really nothing you can't do in terms of, of hammocks. Um, uh, on, in my, I think it's on my website. It's definitely in my book. I've got an, uh, instructions on how to make a three-person hammock stand using materials you can buy at Home Depot. You can spend about forty dollars and get a ha make a hammock stand that can house three people. So it's really uh, you can you can make hammock stands that are very portable. In fact, uh, I did a. I'll have to put this maybe in the the, um, the notes section hiker. I think it's sectionhiker.com. I did a guest post for them on all kinds of portable hammock stands. So anything from steel steel bar stands to the lightweight backpacking stands, there are lots of options available to you. So you can still go hammock camping if you know that either maybe you're going to a campery that, like I said, is just a big field of grass, or maybe you're going into a desert location and you, you still want to be above the scorpions, you want to hang above the snakes, <laughs> you can, there are hammock stands that you can take with you. Uh, it's certainly, there are more options if it's a car camping type experience or maybe a short walk. Uh, there's, again, lots of options. Nice. Okay. Um, let's see. Austin asked if you recommend the Eno hammocks. Eno, uh, that's a great hammock. It's the uh, Eagles, Eagle Nest Outfitters. And they're one of the few commercial hammock brands that have really made a name for themselves. Uh, just recently, this last year, they also showcased at the um, uh, outdoor retailer show this summer. And they, they're coming out with, uh, you've, and you've probably seen them, they've got their own line of, of insulated underquilts and top quilts now. These are things that you know nobody was selling before, and now they're a mainstream manufacturer selling them. They've got a, a range of tarps and and hammock straps, they are a full service hammock company. So uh, the Eno brand is a fantastic brand among others, but absolutely. Now, I will make one mention about the Eno brand. Um, they, they are a brand that's recommended and sold through the BSA Scout Shop. So that, that serves a little bit of credibility for some, uh, for some people. Um, when, when you look at a hammock, one thing that I always look for is you want to make sure that it's, it has the right weight capacity for the occupant and that it's the right size. Most hammocks come in about 10 feet long and about 5 feet wide. That is what you'd call the generic uh, standard size hammock. Um, 
when you hear hammocks that are called doubles or triples, they're not, they're usually, all the difference is, is they're a little bit wider than the single. So if you have an opportunity to test them out, a lot of people will buy a double thinking that maybe two people can sleep in them, but really it's just a tiny bit wider so you can get a, maybe a little bit bigger person in there or a different hang. But if you can try the hammock out, give it a try first. Um, there are other hammocks that are a little longer. Typically, the longer the hammock, the more comfortable it's going to be, not the width. Um, so, for example, if you want, if you're a taller person, let's say over six feet tall, you might want to get a hammock that's ten, ten and a half feet long, or maybe an eleven foot hammock, and you'll find that that's a lot more comfortable than a hammock that's just a little bit wider. Because what happens in any hammock after a while, the the they they tend to what I call canoe. You get these gunnels. The, mm -hmm. the sides of the hammock tend to tighten up, and it prevents you from really getting a diagonal. So if you if you have a hammock that's only 10 feet long and they've just added more width, all that does is curl up the sides more and make prevent you from getting a really good diagonal shape. So look at the hammock sizes as well as the weight capacity when you're looking at a hammock to purchase. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and there are a lot of options out there for sure. And, you know, myself, I'm 6'4 and, you know, 250. 50 pounds, so so they do have hammocks out there for bigger guys and longer guys and all sorts of things. So absolutely, it's, it's, it's definitely true. Um, I wanted to talk to you about tenderfoot requirement number two. So you you know we we're billing this as you know how this how ten, hammock camping intersects with Boy Scouts and. Tenderfoot yes. requirement number two is spend at least one night on a patrol or troop camp out and sleep in a tent you helped pitch. <laughs> so Yes, that's a good question. Not that I'm, you know, one of those literal people, but, you know, you had mentioned that this is a question that comes up, right? It is. Um, and as I mentioned earlier in, in this recording, um, we... We tend to, as scouters, sometimes we get into tra traditions or systems or routines, and there's nothing wrong with those routines. They, they often help to clarify and bring focus to a method. But yeah, it is true. Sometimes we get so stuck on a routine that we think that, that that's, that's the purpose or that's the, how, the way that it has to be done. Uh, as, we, as I've done a lot of uh, district training, I often tell these new scouters, there's, there's your way, there's my way, and there's the scouting way. And we just need to be very careful and clear that we're we're really just following the scout method and not, you know, imposing our own thoughts and feelings about how it should be done. The definition for a tent, if you look it up online, is it's pretty basic. It's just a, a you know a shelter, in in its in essence. So I'm not going to try to di to dictate what a scoutmaster or assistant scoutmasters decide if that if if pitching a hammock qualifies. In my opinion, I think absolutely pitching a hammock would qualify for because what is what's the what's the point of that requirement? It's that the boys understand what to look for, right? They need to select a site that is a good site to to um, to sleep in the night. They're not going to be digging trenches. They don't want to be under a widow maker. They don't want to uh, you know they want to respect the the land. So hammocks provide that same opportunity as a tent with maybe even an added leave no trace benefit and they're still going to be able to tie the knots they need to tie they're going to still have an opportunity to set their own shelter so in my opinion yes that's a great way to to uh, qualify that requirement for the tenderfoot rank yeah you know i would be in full agreement with that just from the standpoint of looking at at the skills that they would need to set that up are no different for a hammock you know and actually are probably a little bit higher uh, um, as far as the the need for for tying knots and things like that, uh, as well as a site selection. So, I mean, the answers are a little bit different, but they're not they're not uh, they're not something that would be completely easy for for a scout to to blow by. So, I, I think uh, I would absolutely agree with that. Um, <clears throat> I've got one more question <clears throat> before uh, we kind of close this out here. Uh, this came from Blaze. Um, who apparently just won a copy of your book. So, <laughs> um, congratulations. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, he says, in my first attempts in a hammock in a rainstorm, 
had me getting wet from drips coming down the tarp line, as well as me moving out from underneath the tarp when I changed my position during the night. I've also been baffled by all the choices to secure the hammock and the tarps, some of which don't work for large trees. And there also seem to be all sorts of special ropes and tie-outs and whoopee slings, etc. Uh, for me, there's there seems to be almost too much information available at, on the forums. Um, is there a preferred beginner setup, which is easy and quick to set up? Or he goes, I purchased a larger tarp with a de detachable doors on it, but I don't want to keep buying more gear. So is there is there a good beginner's direction you would point someone? Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, um, is it it was Blaze you said? Yeah. Um, if if Blaze, if you'd like to connect with me after, I'm sure we'll have more time. I could go into some more details because you have a lot of questions in there, kind of intermixed. Uh, everything from properly setting up a tarp to all of the knickknacks that you can use to uh, hang a hammock. I would say for a beginner. Again, having a basic hammock, and almost every hammock you buy today, especially just a simple gathered-in hammock, they almost all come with a small cord um, on the end, a little loop on the end of the hammock. After, after that, the, the suspension that I would recommend would be a simple webbing strap. In fact, there's a couple companies that sell them. Uh, Eno Hammock sells it. It's called the Atlas Strap. The Atlas strap is very similar to a, the uh, the Kamek Python strap, and what it is, I think I, I may have an example right here. So this strap, it has uh, daisy chain loops every four inches. I don't know if you can see that in the video, and mm -hmm. so it provides connector points every four inches along the suspension. So you take this this strap, you put it around the tree and feed it through the. Uh, there's a loop on the end, so you feed it through itself, and there's really uh, as, as I've done so much hammock camping with scouts, I found that that's probably the easiest method. They don't have to learn any complicated knots or use whoopee slings or all the other, and I know that my book can probably even be a little overwhelming because I list dozens of ways to set up not only tarps but hammocks, but I think that's one of the simplest. is a simple daisy chain strap that allows you to just quickly connect. So what you would need is that strap with the daisy chains and, and a climbing rated carabiner and that carabiner could just clip anywhere along that strap. It's very basic, and I, you don't really need to instruct on how to do that because some of the knots and other things that you read about in hammock forums, like, for example, um, uh, the Marlin Spike Hitch, it works as long as you do it correctly, and that's one of the problems, too, is that if, there's, if they don't do it correctly, they could slip right off and fall on the ground. So you want to make sure that you're teaching and using techniques that's going to help them uh, not only do it correctly, but do it safely. And I think that's one of the, the easiest ways. And we can connect offline. I can probably show you some tips that's going to help you with the drips in the tarp because that is a, it's a very easy thing to fix, but it's also easy to get wrong. So um, we're going to go a little bit over time. I mean, it's a little, little bit past 8 already, but we'll, we'll probably go for a few more minutes here real quick to, to answer more questions if you want to go into a little bit more detail. Um, if somebody's got a, a quick question here for at the end, uh, you can email Clark um, at uh, scoutcircle.org, and and we'll try to get that one here in the last couple minutes before we before we shut it down. But uh, uh, <laughs> so so the the dripping down the line is that is that a not solution? Is it uh, um, is it something that you you in the way you hang it or or how how? Yeah, how there's you... there's a couple of things there. So and. So the, the dripping problem can happen not only on the hammock, but also on the tarp. So what's happening is you've got an exposed ridge line or the sp suspension that is collecting water, and depending on the conditions, you basically can get a little river of water traveling down that line. Now with tarps, one of the simplest solutions is if you have, if you just use lines, uh, rope guy lines, just on the ends of the tarp, then that's not going to be a problem. The water is going to drip down, and once it reaches the tarp, it, it's going to just drip straight down. And typically that's not going to be a problem. If you use what's called a continuous ridge line that runs, basically you've got a rope connecting two trees and you've clipped a, a tarp onto it, if you hang the tarp over that continuous ridge line, there is the possibility of that water um, seeping all the way down to that continuous ridge, ridge line and continuing to drip or to uh, seep 
across that ridge line. It's happened to me. I was actually fairly surprised because I was getting this rain uh, <laughs> dripping on top of me. So one of the solutions to that issue is to flip the, uh, the tarp around so that the ridge line travels on top of the tarp instead of on the bottom. So you, you connect the tarp uh, to the ridge line and it's hanging below it. And there's some really easy techniques to do that uh, that I illustrate in my book as well. But uh, that's one. Now for hammocks, you have a, a, a problem because if you've got a strap or a rope that's coming directly to the hammock, that water can seep all the way and actually soak out the hammock. But uh, the solution for that is also very simple. One is, is to have a, a drip uh, point very close to the hammock. I, I recently did a post on my blog about um, continuous loops on a, on a on a hammock. As I mentioned before, at the very end of a, most hammocks they have this small rope loop that then you can connect anything to. And if you have a, a little hardware device, like even, a, uh, like I mentioned, those carabiners, when the water gets to the carabiner, it, it's always going to find the lowest point and also if it's a rounded point it's going to drop off. So once it hits that carabiner, that water will typically collect and drop off before it even reaches. So it's called a water break. And if you can create a water break, you want to put that water break it's going to have to be underneath your, your tarp so it's protected from getting wet and as close to the hammock as possible. So the water will come down the strap, but once it reaches that water break, it's going to fall down before it gets to the hammock. You just want to make sure that water break is underneath the tarp. And if you don't have hardware or you don't want to use hardware, you can create a water break by just attaching a string or um, some cord or rope and tie off right no, near your hammock because that water is going to soak up and drip down to the lowest point before it hits the hammock or, and you should be just fine. Okay, great. All right, well I think we'll uh, um, call it there unless we've got something else that came in. Clark, is there any, any other questions that have come up? or No, I think, I think we managed to get uh, all the questions that got emailed in and great. I really appreciate everybody uh, participating. Um, Derek, uh, let's make sure that everybody knows how to find your book. Uh, it's on Amazon. It's also, I'm sure we can find it on your website. And the website, again, is theultimatehang.com. Um, and you want to go there because Derek maintains a blog uh, that will keep you uh, informed about all the developments in, the, in hammock land. Um, it's it's a tribe. It's it's if you can't tell, you know, you you we're going to make you one of us, one of <laughs> us. <laughs> well, Clark and and Arlen, if it's all right, I have uh, I can get a special coupon code for the listeners to get a oh, special yeah, sure. discount on the book. Uh, let me pull that up if I can real quick. Or do you have um, notes that we can throw in? What's the easiest way? Because if you give me just about uh, one minute, I'll be able to pull up the um, Yeah, why the don't you go ahead, go ahead and do that, and uh, we'll make sure to put it on scoutcircle.org, and you'll be able to find links about how to find the book, The Ultimate Hang, at scoutcircle.org, and uh, the other resource of uh, Derek's website, you'll be able to find that there too. Arlen, while uh, Derek's doing that, let's talk about October. Okay, yeah, I think uh, October we have on the menu for October is is uh, backpacking, right? Uh, that sounds that sounds right. I think that's on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think we have a guest nailed down, but I think uh, we. Uh, the thirteenth of October, the second, uh, the second Sunday, yep. uh, same same time, same bat time, same bat channel. Absolutely. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about backpacking and how that relates to troops and. Uh, well, things like yeah, that. we'll especially be talking about scouts and backpacking. Scouts um, and backpacking. Yes. yes. Which, which I can expound on my theory that I that I developed at summer camp this year that that a tent. For a scout is less about protecting them from the weather and more about containing the explosion of their stuff. Right. So, yeah. yes. so we can we can talk all about that. <laughs> yeah, and um, Derek, were you able to get that uh, coupon code up? Yeah, I, it's it's just I got a slow computer right now, so oh, okay, slow. <laughs> all right, 
I'm slowly getting there. Customer. I'm watching the progress bar. We love to talk, so it's <laughs> for, no problem. For sure. Um, I want to thank everybody uh, who participated tonight, and note that um, we we had a change of winners actually. Um, because uh, Blaze Vitale originally got the first, the first correct answer, but Blaze says he already has the book, oh, so okay. he was he generously offered it to the next person in line, okay. and the next person in line. Let me double check on that one. Was Dave Scott? Dave, Dave Scott. Dave Scott. So. Um, Dave, you'll be receiving uh, a copy of The Ultimate Hang. Um, yes. So, Jason Wacker and Dave Scott, I will be emailing both of you and requesting your address. So, if you want the book, you'll have to tell me where you live, or at least where you get your mail. <laughs> so, so um, anyway, all of the resources that you've heard about tonight, uh, Derek's book, Derek's website, uh, all of the different things that have been referred to. Your best source for that is going to be going to the ultimatehang.com and looking at the stuff that Derek has there. Um, and I think I think that'll help out. Did did the uh, did the ancient computer uh, finally work for you there, Derek? I'm almost there. Almost, almost there. So, <laughs> almost there. <laughs> so this, uh, I don't know if it's like all the streaming I'm doing. This is a uh, really tough. Oh yeah. yeah. But yeah, I finally no, got to the link. I'm just waiting for it to to pop up. Uh, if they do purchase the book with a discount code, uh, you'll have to purchase it through theultimatehang.com. That's where the, you can put in the coupon code. Certainly, um, I do have an ebook version. If you like the Kindle uh, app for any device, is probably the least expensive way. I can't beat that price. It's like four dollars for the uh, the ebook. Um, but if you want the hardback, the or excuse me, the paperback version, uh, you'll have to use this. You have to go to my my store if I can ever get this website to pull up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, if we don't have it on the broadcast, we'll make sure that people have it. Uh, you can go to scoutcircle.org. All you got to do is get to scoutcircle.org because you're going to see this presentation and the information involved with it will be right there on the homepage at scoutcircle.org, and yeah. you'll you'll be able to find the mysterious coupon code as soon as it is generated. It's <laughs> being done by steam power or something like ah! that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, we've gone almost 15 minutes over time, and we usually promise people that we won't keep them up too late and that we will hold to our hour or so. But what a great presentation. Thanks so much, Derek. Yeah, thank you. This was great having me. And, and once again, we're going to be back on October 13th, the second Sunday in October, between 9 and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we'll be talking about scouts and backpacking. And you can start sending your questions right away. You can either send them to Arlen, A-R-L-E-N, at scoutcircle.org, or Clark, at scoutcircle.org. And... Uh, We'll, we'll get that put together for you. So thanks thanks again, Arlen. Thanks, Derek. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks, Derek. This was great. Okay.